Welcome to the Blogger Genius Podcast brought to you by Milo Tree. Here's your host, Jillian Leslie. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Blogger Genius Podcast. I am your host, Jillian Leslie. I have been building blogs and businesses online since 2009 when David, my husband, and I started Catch My Party. And since then, we've launched our Milo Tree pop up app and now Milo Tree Cart which is the easiest way for you female creators to sell digital products to your audience like digital downloads or workshops or memberships, coaching courses. You can do it all with my lottery card. It's so interesting. I was on a bunch of coaching calls this week and I kept hearing a theme. Women telling me they were bad at tech. And I want you to know, I feel that way sometimes about myself, but the truth is, I think tech is bad at us. I don't think that tech bros are building platforms, tools for females, for women. And guess what? We are, because we understand, I understand what it's like to be a creator wearing so many hats, having to manage so many platforms. So our philosophy is always, how can we get you up and selling within 10 minutes with sales pages that are seriously fill in the blank? This is where you get to put B minus work to the test. Go start putting products up and seeing if your audience wants to buy them. And we listened to you because you said you wanted a lifetime deal, one-time payment, that's it, you own it forever. You can buy my lottery cart right now for our introductory price at $349. We offer a 30-day, no questions asked, money-back guarantee, so there is no risk. Head to mylotreecart.com to sign up and to no longer feel that you are bad at technology. For today's episode, I have my friend, Kate Doster, back on the show. This is her third appearance, and she is one of the smartest minds when it comes to email marketing. And she's so generous with what she shares. We talk about how to put together an email sequence to sell your offer. We go piece by piece. You will be taking notes with this episode. So without further delay, here is my interview with Kate Doster. Kate, welcome back to the show. It is so good to see you. It's so nice to see you too. Hey everybody. It's it's been a long time. In fact, you've been on my podcast two times before. So Uh I will link to those in the show notes. So Kate, you are like one of my email experts that I go to. And that's what I want to talk about today. But will you briefly just share how you got into this, how you got into teaching email and where you are today? Sure. So, hey, everybody, I am Kate Doster, and it is my soul and soul's mission to put money in the hands of good people so they can do good with it and eradicate this idea that nice people have to finish last in business. Because the truth is, is that people love to buy things. Like if I called you out and asked you, when's the last time you gave Jeff Bezos money on Amazon? I guarantee it was in the last seven days because most people have. So wouldn't you rather that your people get taken care of by somebody who actually cares about them, who's not going to treat them as a commodity or a number or lifetime value or any of that gross stuff? Nobody would, right? So we help people do that through email marketing and easy as offers and just being able to show up as you and be able to communicate in a value that registers with the human brains because brains are not logical or else like Mm. the smoking industry would not be a thing. Like, Mm. why are you going to have something that you're going to have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on that's going to shorten your life, potentially take away your jaw? Like, it makes no sense, but people still smoke. That's so So interesting. I help with. And I ended up in email marketing because I was a copywriter with a W. And that means I got paid to write words. Honestly, the main people hit buttons, truly. And when you're a copywriter, you write a lot of different things, homepages, about pages, sales pages. And I just loved writing email sequences because it was like I was writing to people's friends. And your email list has been proven time and time again that it's going to convert higher. Because I mean, again, there's nothing wrong with selling on social media. And I think that if you're like, you know, very like, oh, I'm just doing one thing, you're, you're cutting yourself short of all the people that you can help, right? But like, think about it. On Instagram, like how many people are you following? probably 200, 500, thousands, right? You are not subscribed to a thousand newsletters. 
You're not even subscribed to 200 newsletters. You're only subscribed to the handful of people that you truly do want to hear from and get value from, which means those people are in it to win it. So that is why people on your email list are so much more likely to buy. Mm, Okay. Uh, We have launched My Low Tree Cart, which, as I was explaining to Kate, is a way for creators and bloggers to sell their products, their knowledge directly to their audiences and email lists. So these are things like workshops and digital downloads and webinars and memberships and coaching, any kind of product that you can deliver via technology. That's really what we're trying to offer. And because I feel like so many people who are listening to this show are probably monetizing via ads on their site or working with sponsors. If you have an audience, you are leaving a lot of money on the table. And I, like you, want to empower people uh, to to go grab that money, to, to take that, because chances are you are putting out real value uh, into the world and you should be paid for that. So that was right. why that was why I said, Kate, come on my show. Let's talk about selling and selling through email. Yeah. And if, again, you think about it, treat people like people. That's one of my biggest mottos, right? Again, we just talked about the human brain is not logical, right? If people give you money, they are more likely to actually see success. I'm not going to call the listeners of this podcast, but I know for a fact, because I've listened to this podcast, like the amount of great advice that's on here is fantastic. But because it's free, maybe you're listening to it as you're cleaning or you're grocery shopping or walking, chances are it's going in one ear and out the other, right? But if you actually sat down and paid Jillian for her coaching, for her memberships, for those sorts of things, you are going to take it more seriously. And I know that all of you guys just want to help out your people. So why not give them the edge of them being able to bet against, honestly, bet on themselves and hedge their bets that I'm actually going to do something because I paid for it. Mm -hmm. Again, like we all know really like, you know, that bag you get from Target, like who cares if your kids get gross stuff on there. But like, if you buy like a coach bag, or like a Louis Vuitton, like that one like golden purse, right? Like it's up in the closet. It's in the dust bag. Like no one can breathe on it. Your kids can't look at it. They can't be in the room with it, right? Because you paid more for it. You're going to take it more seriously. And so when you start flipping that into like, oh, I'm not like just grabbing dollars, but no, I'm pushing success. I am mm-hmm. empowering people to actually be able to get dinner on the table and not have to go to the McDonald's drive through if they don't want to. I'm helping people actually be able to organize their paperwork. So God forbid, when awful things happen, they know where the birth certificates are. They know where the deed to the house is, right? Like these are the things that you are going to help people do by charging them money. It just is. It just it, is. I just have to say, I had this conversation with a friend of mine who has an enormous TikTok following, like 150,000 followers. Mm -hmm. And she, she does, um, kids activities. And I said to her, Hey, I will help you one-on-one set up a paid workshop where you like, do like three cool kind of science experimenty things for toddlers and, you know, walk through it in an hour for people, for moms so that they could do cool stuff with their kids. And she, like when I said, and charge something like $27 $27 for like a mom to show up to have these like cool things that they can pull out at any time for their kids. And she said to me, I can't do it. And I said, why? And she said, cause I give it all away for free. And then I feel bad charging. No, <laughs> I honestly, and this is, I don't know if the next time you're going to talk to her is but you have to realize, and even especially with the audience of that size, and I know on TikTok, sometimes it's very hard for creators to get back in front of even their own audiences, right? But I guarantee you, there are people that watch her every single day that love her, that are just looking for a way to support her. So she honestly might just have moms just give her the money to be like, thank you so much for showing up, for getting me through the pandemic, if she's been around that for, because my kids love this other stuff, just go ahead. And yeah, are some people going to bitch? Of course, but who cares? Who cares? Why are you not going to let Samantha feel great about herself? Because she's finally helping out a creator. She finally has a way to support them besides just a like on a TikTok because Barbara over here is going to complain. No, I love that. Okay. So I feel like uh, because many in my audience are mothers and we, we give, and you know, I don't charge my daughter for good snacks. Uh, It, it feels icky. (laughs) 
And I, I have this whole philosophy now, which is, you know, oh, oh I, I don't want to feel salesy. And I go, go feel salesy because chances are your feeling of salesy is probably not even aggressive enough. Mm-mm. And I don't even think you need to be aggressive. Like that's the thing. For some reason, people always default to like their worst sales experience when they are then themselves trying to sell. So they think about the really pushy people at like the mall kiosk, right? They're like, oh, like, and they try to like get to like polish one of your nails. They think about the car salesman that speaks over them or in our particular case, not the truck that I just bought for my husband, but our last car that we bought. I am the breadwinner. My husband's a stay-at-home dad. I paid cash for both of our vehicles, right? The guy didn't even look me in the face once because I was a female. And he's like, well, what are you doing? My husband's like, I'm standing down. And he's like, oh, like that one. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm a CEO of a seven figure company. That's why he's a stay at home dad. Right. So I think that when people are bringing in all of this negative energy around this, I like the word energy. Some people resonate more with mindset. Some people are like, no, it's too woo But like energy around it, that's the issue. When you are channeling that sham wow guy and you're just literally repeating yourself and you're forcing it down people's throats, you're completely correct. It's going to feel awful. Right. But if you think about the benefits, so what is so great about having these kids activities, right? What is so great about having dinner prepared? And you also think about the flip side about what not having those things done is doing to people. And it's not that you need to sell negative. It's like, oh, you know, if you don't end up buying Milo cart, you're going to die like poor and penniless. And when the cops find your, you know, your face is going to be half eaten off by the cat. No, it's like, you could very well be spending all of your time fooling around with, and then I would actually name probably a competitor. We won't do it here. So you can spend all your time fooling around with this, or you can just let me handle it. So that way you can spend more of your time. And then again, you would give, we call them moments. I believe we talked about this last time as well. You know, spending time out with your kids, playing out today. You can have time to be able to create a new products, to be able to create your TikToks and not feel like at the end of the day, oh my goodness, I had no time for anything, right? To be able to go to Whole Foods and just buy the raspberries and it not matter how much they cost because you <laughs> want them and you made the money from them and you did it by helping people and giving them an advantage. So I think that's where everyone needs to sort of like realize like, oh, if I don't make it, about the product. I mean, obviously you need to mention it, right? But if I don't make it about the product and I make it about the person and what is going on in their lives and how if this can improve something or take something away. And again, we're not doing huge leaps here, everybody. Like I'm doing like, oh, but like my meal planner is not going to be able to like X, Y, and Z. I'm just happy that it's Thursday and I don't have the kids being like, what are we going to feed everybody after cheer? Like that makes my life easier. I want that easy button and I will gladly pay you for an easy button. So that's the way that I want you to start thinking of it and not just relying on things like urgency and scarcity. So okay, scarcity, like there's only five left. You can't do that in digital products. There's always going to be more than five, right? And like urgency, it's like, well, the cart's closing or the discount's going away. The discount's going away. Yeah. At some point you do need to remind them like the discount's going away, right? But in your first couple of sales emails, you're literally just going to be like, I know this, this, and this is happening, which is why you need to be able to have A, B, and C. And guess what? This product has it all there for you. So that way you can why, right? Like that's where it's up. So let, okay, and I guess want... what? You can get it for 25% off for the next hour. Let's so talk about how it's best for them. Let's talk about this. Okay. So I create toddler science experiments and crafts. And I am going to say, all right, Kate, walk me through this. I don't feel comfortable selling. I feel weird because I give it away for free. I'm going to charge $27. I'm going to show up for an hour on Zoom and love on you and give you these awesome things you can do with your kids, including a PDF with all the stuff you need to buy. And you can have the recording so that you can watch this a thousand times. How do I approach my email sales strategy? How many emails, for example? Sure. The first thing that you're going to have to do is get over yourself when it comes to selling. And I think that we've really talked a lot about energetics because if you are not so unbelievably excited, again, not for the product, but for what your person's after is going to be. So their transformation. It's not going to come across. And again, I think people think transformation, I think like big grandiose because we're, you know, used to things like, at least here in the States, like you remember the biggest loser where people would drop like hundreds of pounds and you're like, oh no, we're not talking about big things here. We're just like, oh, they're Saturday morning, ran more smoothly. 
right? So now they weren't late to cheer practice because they didn't have to fumble around to find their keys because they had actually organized their entryway thanks to your PDF, right? So right. we're not talking about like huge stuff here. Ever. Right, right, So right. you need to get over it yourself and think to yourself before you even sit down to write your first sales email. I always tell people, especially if they're very versed to sales, one, I want you to put on your favorite music ever. Whatever song just like jams you out. Some people it's Eminem. Some people it's like 90s hip hop. Like whatever just makes you smile. I know can, Jillian can tell what her favorite song is right now. Whatever's going to make you smile, you're going to put that on. Like any of you are like, well, I need to write in silence. You're going to listen to it first. Then you can go into silence, right? Okay. Okay. So depending on when this live workshop is going to take place. Cause I don't know if that's one of the perks of it being live. And that's a $20. Yeah. So that if you're going to show up then, live and you get the recording. And then I would probably, because it's only $27, I don't want to say only because I do think that's a great sum of money. It's not going to need something like, um, if you guys follow somebody like Amy Porterfield, who literally does like five month long launches of like 80 different projects and like, oh, no, you don't need any of that stuff, any of that stuff. So I would say probably because you want to give people some time, I would say probably about two weeks or a week and a half most, right? You can be like subtly hinting about it, but like not necessarily putting somebody in front of a checkout page quite yet, but you want to be subtly hinting at it. What's really great about this is you don't necessarily have to pick the activities out of thin air. You can literally have an email go out, say two or even three weeks before you're going to have your live workshop. Like, hey, so I want to put together some of the absolute best kids activities that I have where you're going to be able, we can probably put some of them together. I'll make sure to send you a list fast. If you sign up early enough, you can ask me any of your questions. You can bring your toddler around. Like we're going to have a fun time, but I can't decide between these five. So what ones do you want to actually see? Or, you know, what is your toddler most interested in? Again, you can ask these questions so that way people are starting to, and have a name for it. Right. So if you look and start being like, Oh, she's got this thing and it's coming up soon. Right. So we get that in there. All right. So now we're ready to sort of like open the cart. You are going to find that you're most likely going to get the most sales, the first email that you send out and the last one. And you could literally send out that last one, like two hours before it starts. Yes. That's just the way that people are like people procrastinate. And so I don't want you thinking like, Oh my goodness, I sent out that first email and nobody bought. Now, analytics are a little bit harder to track, which is a good thing because of privacy policies and stuff like that. Right. So not every open is going to register on any email service provider. None are better than the other ones because they're not going to break the law. None of them are, but it could be, especially because you're targeting busy moms. You sent it on a Wednesday. She didn't get to check her email until Friday. You got buried on the next page and no one's getting to the next page of their emails. It's just not going to happen, right? Like chances are you landed in the promo tab because most people have Gmail. And that when someone's looking on their cell phone, it comes through the main inbox anyway. So you don't have to worry about like, oh, do I need to be in primary? No, they're going to see your email, right? But they're not going to see it if they have all these other emails. So that's why you can't, again, just because Barbara might be like, oh my goodness, she sent me two emails about this amazing thing and might complain. Don't let Sally, who really wants to show up, never know about it because you were so afraid of one negative Nancy. And you're going to be thinking about, say, maybe you would send like, I don't know, maybe like five-ish emails. So um, five-ish emails through, let's say it's uh, a two-week launch. Or let's say, yeah, yeah two-week launch. Easy, right? How many, so, how many you know, emails? You are going to, you know, send one. If you haven't been talking about this, that's the other thing. You probably the week before should have been talking about like science projects or like, the one activity that's been proven to help your toddler in school the most, right? Like give them reasons to be like interested in live science. Like, right. Like this is like key, right? Again, three things to get your kids to stay still. The last one happens to be something that's engaging and interactive and uses their hands. And guess what? Next week you've got something that's going to do just that, right? So you're still giving them tips. You're still giving them a lot of value and you're just seeding in the stuff that you have. So when it is actually sort of opened. I would never do a subject line. This is me personally. That would be something like, um, you know, science workshop open. And then like all exclamation points because <laughs> who really cares, right. But again, eventually, and probably towards the end, like last chance to get in the workshop, that makes sense. Right. Cause people will open that one who've been on the fence or maybe people who haven't been paying attention. So you, again, what's the benefit, right? I got your next Saturday planned. Don't worry about rainy days with your kids. And you can even include like little parentheses, like masterclass, workshop. Um, all email service providers should let you not only do a subject line, but you can do like, um, I call it like the little hint text, but it essentially be like the subheadline. So like when you're in mobile, you know how like you like start pre-reading an email 
So you can go ahead and you can set that up to maybe have the name of the workshop, right? And again, this is really great. So we're going to talk about, again, the benefits uh, maybe you could talk about, you know, last week or two weeks ago, I'd asked you guys about activities everyone was interested in. And by far, it was frogs, rockets, and crystals. So I have put together this one workshop workshop where we are going to go over and then again, talk a little bit about the experiments and benefits. And you're going to be able to get this, this, and this for $27. And don't worry if you cannot make it live, even though, let's be honest, we're going to have the most fun live. But I know how it is with kids' naps times. So they like to, to not take those you get lifetime access to the replay, right? Um, again, so the next email, you might think to yourself, and we talked about this before, um, I always like to think of yeah, butts. So mm. I based it off of the Sir Mix-a-Lot principle because just like he likes big butts, so does your email list and so does your wallet. So what objections, what yeah, but would somebody have about coming to this workshop, you hosting it, or the topic in general. And so usually towards the beginning, it's like the topic in general and all that sort of stuff. And then the very end, it's a little bit of you, to be honest, right? What do you so mean you? What do you mean You, like, can they trust you to be oh, the person okay. to teach Got them it. how to get Got there? It. Okay, so in the beginning, it's like, you might think these are so like, complicated. Like, why waste my time on doing yeah. science activities? Too expensive, it's, too hard. Yeah. I don't I mean, like people science. people are always going to think it's expensive. And again, it's what what do they value? Right. Like I just paid an obscene amount of money for some lifting shoes because I'm into powerlifting, but like I didn't care because they were powerlifting shoes. Now, if you had got me to buy a normal pair of sneakers for that, I never would have happened. Right. Like I will buy four dollar shirts, but I will buy fifty dollar shorts. It's just one of those things. All right. How much were the shoes, by the way? I have to ask you how much were the powerlifting uh, shoes? Well, the shoes were supposed to be $199, but I got them on sale. For 129, nice which job. was shocking because nice I was job. ready to pay the 200 okay. because I needed them. Okay. Uh, so, but again, most people are not going to prioritize powerlifting shoes, right? Like that's not going to be like key up on that's how they want to spend their $200. So that's why it's just like, again, why is it worth their wild? Why is it worth the child's wild? And again, you're not supposed to make some big outlandish claims. It's just some fun things. If people have already purchased, right. Be like, you know, we're so excited. You know, I wouldn't say necessarily how many spots you've sold, but you know, we're welcoming so many people in and really your whole job during any launch is to keep your energy up. So say you did send out that first email and you didn't get any sales for those first couple of days. It is completely okay. The next email you're going to send out is going to be tackling a yeah, but, right? So or is it, it one something... yeah, but, or a bunch of yeah, buts? Yeah. I would just do one. And then the next email after that can be some frequently asked questions, right? So then again, frequently asked questions, you know, will I get to keep it? Um, about how much is it going to cost me in supplies? How is this different then? I think that that especially how it's different then I think is really great, especially towards either the end of the cart. And again, I wouldn't be like the first email, but it could also be the second email as well. Again, like how is this different from my TikTok videos? Just straight up say it, right? It's like, so we've been getting a lot of questions about our you know workshop. And again, you're going to hyperlink it where we're going to tackle blank, 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 and blank. And one of the questions that came up was how is this any different from my TikTok videos? And first off, I love that people are asking these questions. And then you're going to go into how is it different, right? Again, they get them to keep it. They're going to get their PDF. They're going to get to interact with you. Maybe you have something where anyone who, you know, purchases in the sort of that first week, maybe they're going to help you pick a bonus experiment that you guys are going to do, right? Like there's a lot of different ways that you can sort of put that on there. So again, why would they want to, I don't want to say waste, but sometimes you think of the cynics, like why would they, they want to hang out, right? Again, why is it worth the $27? And I wouldn't straight up and say like, why is this worth $27? Because that seems a little gauche, right? But it's like, it's talking about everything, like the interaction that they're going to have with their kids. Maybe it's some alone time with them. Maybe it's being their cool mom. Maybe it's actually being able to do activities with your kids that, you know, aren't just coloring or puzzles or watching Paw Patrol. And like, you would call out like the kid shows and things of that. Because when you can mirror somebody's life, to them, mm. they're going to be like, yeah, this person gets it. She gets me. And that's, that's when you win. Right. And again, another one for, for this person, right. That's, you know, why, why me sort of a scenario, not that you would ever start an email with why me, right. It's people really enjoy their stuff, right. It's showing comments about how engaging they are. It is, you know, especially if the angle that you're taking is that you're from an actual science background, maybe you're a NASA scientist. I don't know, maybe something cool, right. It's like, then you'd like talk about it in an email. 
So the last chance, so when you're actually going to be closing a cart or the last time that you want to talk about something, I would say probably send two emails that same day just to like- Okay, so let's say I'm doing it it at noon on Wednesday. I'm going to send an email- Tuesday after Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. What is your thought? Yeah, I think that works. I think that works Um, because you're doing it at noontime. So like if you're doing it like a little bit later or like, you know, if they have to buy on Friday and the things on Monday, then he would send two on Friday. But again, saying to yourself, like, why would somebody be on the fence? And I always like to lead with empathy, right? Mm. It's like, hey, so I know that you haven't signed up for this yet. And I just want you to know that there is absolutely no problem with that, right? Like I always like to give people like this out, but if it's one of these things that have just got sent to the bottom of your inbox, if you're really into nerdy science, like myself, if you want to be able to have children who are interested in exploring and questioning, and honestly, even if you're a little concerned about the mess, don't worry, because I have something that's going to be able to help you with that. Don't worry. You're going to go my best tips for cleanups because nobody likes to clean up elephant toothpaste. Trust me it's way messier than you think, then we would absolutely love to have you and your child at this live workshop. And if you can't make it because nap time doesn't work out or that's lunchtime. And if you get off schedule, they turn into a gremlin. No worries at all. You'll be able to get the replay instantly. I want to take a short break to say that somebody recently reached out to me and said, do you have a newsletter? And I thought, oh my gosh, I haven't shared about it on the podcast in so long. I send a newsletter email every Sunday and in it, I share my four biggest takeaways from my previous episode. It's great for you because you can read the newsletter, see what the episode's about, read the takeaways and decide if this is an episode you should invest in. So to sign up, go to, it's easy, bloggergenius.com and you can join my list and you can hear what is going on and what I am learning and I am sharing with you, my audience. Again, just go to bloggergenius.com and sign up. I'd be honored to have you. And now back to the show. Now, what about that idea of changing the subject line and resending it to the people who didn't open. So let's say we're doing a two week launch and you said, send five emails. I would do that very early on. I would not do that towards the end. So very early. And why? Because email service providers do an awful job at actually the people that have opened and the emails at the end are more direct. Whereas at the beginning, It can be more like mistakes that kids make. It can be more tips, right? It can be more education-based, right? Where someone is like, you literally two days ago just sent me the same email, right? Like they'll be less likely to respond back. So what you're saying is that you don't think email service providers are good at saying, oh, these are the people who already open. Oh, they can't be because like Apple, you can't track on Apple and you can't track on Android. So therefore those- So unless somebody's opening up on desktop- Unless somebody is opening up on desktop, there's truly no way. Which really? Which is why I tell every. Oh yeah. Which is why I tell everyone like, yes, obviously. Well, I like to think of it as always playing like a video game, right? Like I'm not like too mad if I don't beat Tetris, right? Like who cares? But for like your open rates, just try to get a little better yourself. See if you can sort of notice some tendencies, but realize there are going to be people that are opening that it doesn't say that they opened. It's not going to be like a huge amount, but it is going to be some people. And again, it's every email service provider, all of you, like it's it's everybody's. Um, Because again, phones, all cell phones usually block the pixel that shoots back to your email service provider. And again, like I said, when it's a little bit more casual, when even like you're again, asking those questions, like what people want, you know, go right ahead. Um, I definitely, if again, if you want to send one, because maybe like you wrote a really great yeah, but email and you're just like, that was fantastic. I would say as long as you've got 48 hours in between the send, then you can go ahead and do it. I don't like to send things like 24 hours in between because I feel like that's just not enough time to resend the same exact email. That's such great advice. Okay, so what I'm hearing you say is it's not about you. Get over yourself, which I love. Mm-hmm. I say this all the time. I say it to myself. I say it to my daughter. I say it to anybody that I'm coaching. You are not the star of this movie. 
Mm-mm. The star of the movie is the person you are helping. And the way that you get them to feel like a star is you say, I see you. I know what you are struggling with. I know what your life looks like. I know what your Saturday morning looks like. And yeah. therefore, you can trust me as I have no judgment and I just want to help you. Mm-hmm. And what I'm going to do is lead you on a journey. So I'm going to say, hey, here is this cool thing. And this will enable you to have this future version of yourself. So we're not talking. I mean, about- I would flop that around. I'd talk about the future version of them and then this cool thing. Okay. So you're saying, hey, if you want your Saturday morning to be filled where your kids are happy and engaged and aren't just sitting in front of the TV or their screens, I've got this. So your picture, painting the picture. Who doesn't want their kids to be engaged and not sitting in front of screens on a Saturday morning, right? Like, that sounds great. Then, Without having to clean up a giant mess afterwards. Yes. <laughs> Okay. And, or the idea of like, Hey, have you ever been that person who puts out all these like great art supplies and then your kid just does it for four minutes and then you end up cleaning up the mess while they're sitting in front of screens. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, here's this future that I'm going to paint for you. That looks pretty good. And I had now have a way for you to get there. Mm -hmm. And that's, kind of what I'm leaning into, then it goes to, okay, you don't believe me? I'm going to address the yeah buts. Yeah. Because my kid's different, right? So it's like, oh no, my kid can't sit still for 10 minutes. And it's like, hey, if you have one of those kids that has a hard time sitting still, trust me, you know, I have done this experiment with so many kids and this is the one. See, I wouldn't say trust me. Okay. I would say what you would need to do in order to keep kids engaged, which is why in this cool thing, we do exactly that. So you would be like, hey, here is my, t- like, here are tips for how, like, here are the way strategies to keep kids engaged. And this thing will do that. Yeah. Okay. And then after I've done yeah, buts, then I'm going to continue to lean into painting this future picture. I'm going to like, where do I go from there as I'm teeing up the sale and the ticking clock? Well, for the ticking clock and all that sort of stuff, right? Like towards the end, it's usually a frequently asked questions email because if oh, right. somebody's on the fence and you right. can pull that right from straight from your sales page, um, we will do something like, um, if you haven't necessarily like addressed time yet, you could address time. What do you if mean? If that's an issue, like, like they don't have any time to get it done. They can't get actually time to get the supplies, all of that sort of stuff. You can address at the end because by the end, if they are still opening up your emails and they haven't bought yet, then chances are they don't believe that they can have the success that you're saying. Ooh. So that's why it's like, all right. So that's just something to think about. It's not like you would ever say in an email, like, I know I've tried to get my kids to activities before and they never work. And I know that you're the same exact way you failure of a parent. Like, no, we're never going to say anything like that. Right. It's just, how can we, and this also comes down to product creation. How can we stack the deck in their, in their favor? So could you say something like, Hey, if you do this. You don't like it. I'll give you your money back. Yeah. You can have guarantees to go with those things. And you'd be surprised a lot less people will ask back for their money. I, yes, than you I think. agree. Like, and you I guarantee like you it's not everybody, but right. some people like the risk reversal, like it is quite all right. You can go ahead and do that. Again, you're only going to end up with the same exact money you started with, if that makes sense, right? Like you didn't have the $27 before. So you just won't have the $27 after, right? Absolutely. But it will definitely be fine. So like you said, you can talk a little bit more about the guarantee. You can, in that final email, if you feel like price is really an issue, right? Maybe it's like, hey, so I just wanted to let you know, we're going to be starting the, again, at science workshop. It's going to do this, this, and this in a couple of hours. It's the only time we're really leading with that because like they've got to make a decision, right? And I understand that sometimes you just don't want to justify $27 and that it could go to, and I wouldn't just say other things, but like I would name those other things, Right. It's like, and you're right that because people love knowing that they're right. It's like, and you're right. You could 100% use this $27 to get your kids, you know, pizza and a movie, which would be fun. Everybody loves snuggles. 
or you could spend it on your shoes or, you know what I mean? Like you could talk about some of the other things and then you can throw in a book, but when you are sitting down and you're engaging with your child, when you're exposing them early to the love of science and their curiosity, and yeah, you might get a little bit messy. Like that's where the true memory making is going to come in. And we cannot wait to have you and your, and then however you like to refer to kids, come hang out with us. Right. Oh my God. I feel like I need to like copy that script. That was beautiful. That was terrific. Now, what about a, a late discount or an extra bonus? I don't like to late discounts because I'm not going to reward you for waiting. Mm. I would much rather reward people who take action, but that's just me. Like you're going to literally hear it in my voice, right? Like, no, no. Like if you are going to be in it to win it at the beginning, I would much rather you get like the 10% off or the 15% off or a bonus item. Like it's for the action takers. If you want to take action, take action. I don't need to water stuff down to me. I got to be honest. I just think that sounds desperate. Mm. Other business models do not believe that. I can think of one person that I know and I love her death and she's wicked smart and she discounts stuff all of the time. Uh, that's just her business model. She runs more, she runs her digital product business more like an e-com business does. Like, you know, Kohl's always has sales. So that's the business model that she chose to have. And that's fine. I don't think that she offers private discounts. I mean, she might, but I'm pretty sure it's just like, Hey, everybody it's Thursday and Thursday is deal day. Right? Like, and that's not the day of the week, everybody, but that's mm -hmm. fine. She mm -hmm. likes to do that. But again, if I'm doing something and it's live, then I'm going to reward the people who buy first. So would you do that That's in one me. of your first emails? Hey, if you are, if you buy by Wednesday, you're going to get Maybe this added bonus. To. Yeah. For the added bonuses. Yeah. I always love giving people more stuff than necessarily giving them money off. But if you, it feels better for you to be like, I don't know, I was only nervous about charging 27, but I can get my energy behind like 19, you know, again, whatever one you feel like best about, right. Then offer it at an early bird discount. Again, because mm -hmm. we're it's like we're gonna do this, and then yeah, are you gonna notice that the sales are gonna be the first day and the last day of the discount? You're gonna get the majority, absolutely. Are you gonna get people the next day? They're gonna be like, oh, I missed a discount. Can I have it? And you need to stick to your guns and be in integrity. Like, no, no, you can't, because that's not fair to the other people who have already bought without the discount. Right? You got to stay in integrity. It's very, very important. I know it can be really hard. I know it can be really hard. And then at the end, you'll have more sales again when the cart closes. But you don't just have to do this for things that open and close. Like you can have a product suite or smaller products, or I know um, like a lot of my students love like binders and stuff. And like every once in a while, just do a newsletter that's about that, right? Again, remember how we talked about like, ways to get your kids to actually be engaged. And the third one is to have interactive projects. Well, guess what? You're literally going to say the sentence, which is why in my playtime binder, 98% of the activities are focused on this, this, and this. And it's only $24. It, I love that. People don't know everything that you sell. Like, I, yes, you don't have to make this. People overthink this and they overhype this, that this is, this is a big problem, right? Cause they're afraid of rejection. And then if they make it car like hard and you have to be like, I call it strategy from SNL, which, you know, strategic, right? If they have to overhype this and overcomplicate it, well, then they have an out for why it didn't work. Yes. So when you just make it simple, people are like, Ooh, just make it simple on yourself. Right. Again. If you're like, again, all I have are just things that are available all of the time. And I don't particularly feel like discounting right now. You know, a blog post where you just hyperlink stuff, hyperlink stuff every once in a while, y'all. Like you can make a casual selling. You don't have to do this big launch thing because I know it can be really intimidating. Yes. And that's what I'll challenge and, and again, my students I, to do at the beginning. I am all about done is better than perfect. I am all about a test, test, test. So are the way that my Tree cart works is we sell it for $349 and you own it forever. And then you can just sell, 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 test, 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 try it, put it up there, create a free sales page, see if this is what your audience wants from you. Learn, go, okay, they like this. You can't just tell people something once and expect them to buy and like everyone to buy. How many times did you have to tell your kids to pick up their socks today? Totally. Well, you know, they what's interesting is time. people do a one hour paid workshop. They have the recording and then they go back to their list and sell it. So yeah. the people who didn't buy it the first time didn't show up live. All right, guess what? You've now got this asset. And then every so often people have gone back to their list and sold it over and over again. I'm saying like yeah. maybe every six months. 
So you don't want to inundate your people with it, but it's amazing. Like, but you would never know that if you didn't test it. No. And again, you would be surprised because not everybody is going to be hunting down your website and looking for your offers or your shop page. And especially if you don't even have one of those, cause you just did like a one-off thing and you don't feel like selling the replay. How are people going to know they're not, or maybe, and I was talking to some of this, she's a photographer. So it's a very different business model um, that she had done like mini sessions. I think she had done them over the summer cause that was her low period, but not a whole bunch of her list bought. I'm like, honestly, it's probably just because people who are weighing on vacation. I'm like, I guarantee you if you run, run now and talk about it, like back to school or a pre-holiday, like mini session, people are going to buy it because it makes sense at this time of the year. Right. Mm -hmm. Again, that's why I think of actual stores, everyone, things are in cycles. It makes a lot of sense when people are in September, what are things they're thinking about? Like they're thinking about back to school sometimes, at least for other business owners, usually, especially if they're like us and their moms, you're getting back to business. Um, Gretchen Rubin once said that September was the new January. Yes. Right? In January, everybody wants all the new habits, right? So if you've got an organization binder, a budget binder, a kid's activity binder, a everyone wants to be the program. best version of themselves in yes. January. And guess what also happens in January? Ad revenue tanks. Okay. So how are you going to make money the rest of the year when you know that Q4 is the only and best, like, let's be real, only and best time to have ads on your website? Well, now we've at least got January and some of February taken care of because we are going to go off of what people are naturally already thinking about. And guess what comes after that? Spring cleaning. Boom. you got something there, right? Again, if this fits your audience. So there's always something that can work out. And I know all of us have international audiences. So I do try to make sure that I say that in my emails. It's like, and for all my Aussie friends, I'm aware that it's winter time right now and it's not <laughs> summer and that everyone else is neglecting you. But if you are in the house board or you've got the winter blues and you haven't been able to do much, this is going to help too, right? Like, again, right. you can address these things. Don't come up with all these bid bag reasons not to try. And that's again, why I love Jillian so much. Like she said, done is better than perfect. And I understand that you want to be the absolute best for your audience and that you care about them. Let but it go goes, take a shot with you. But it goes back to that. I, and again, I talk about B minus work, which is by the way, above average. So I'm not saying do crappy work. I'm saying put your best effort there, but there's no such thing as a plus work, even though you think there is. And that is just like a way to never get anything done. So think about B minus work and showing up real. Like we started this conversation, people want to interact with real people. I always say this, so, you know, I write emails once a week and sometimes my emails have a typo. And of course there's that moment when I cringe, if I reread it and go, oh, and then I go, you know what? If somebody is annoyed that I have a typo, they can unsubscribe. They're not my people. And I am saying I'm showing up real. Guess what? Real I people just say that means that you took action. Cause if you didn't take action, again, this is for the entrepreneurs of the world. If you did not take action, you wouldn't have had a typo in the first place. Exactly. I love that. Okay. Quick questions. One mm -hmm. emojis. Yes or no. Um, if it fits your brand, I say, go for it. Okay. And that's one of those things that you could test. So now that you're going to resend the same email, but every email service provider does allow you to do something called AB testing. So test it out and see if having the paintbrush actually makes people open it more. Ooh. I say, sure. Great. Okay. And length of emails. Are these novels? Uh, I, think I think that it's going to depend. You got to, again, treat people like people. Why are they going to their inbox for dopamine hit? Because their kid's soccer game is boring because they're supposed to be writing a sales page if they're a business owner. They're going to procrastinate. So you can't, you can have it be as long as you can keep it interesting. So if you're frequently asked questions email, it's going to be pretty long because your frequently asked questions might be pretty long, but that's why it's towards the end. And only people who are super interested in the product are going to read it, right? Got it. So that's fine. At the beginning, that again, we're keeping engaged. That's why in that email, if we're talking about like ways to get kids to sit still, we're not going to have one of those mega blog posts. It's like 99 ways to get your kids to sit still. It's the three best ways to keep your kid still or paying attention, right? Like, oh, I can handle three. So someone's going to read it and it's entertaining. Again, you'll read a novel all day long and not be like, oh my goodness, there's too many words. Too long. No one wants to sit down and read the encyclopedia. And I don't want you thinking like, oh, like I need great storytelling. No, you need to be relatable. 
as I always tell my students, right? People like to buy from people who they feel like are their friends. Yeah. And the people that are their friends are the ones that understand them. It's not someone that's making grandiose statements like get your kids to listen to you, right? It's get your kids to pick up their socks about starting World War III. Oh yeah. my goodness, how does she know that that happens every time in my house, <laughs> right? That's gonna build that natural no like, and trust. And that's why they're gonna wanna be with you. So don't oh. overcomplicate things. Kate, I love this. Okay, if people, I, honestly, you are just- um, I don't know, providing so much value. You've so inspired me because I have to write some emails today. So I feel really like hopped up. All right, Kate, if people want to reach out to you, learn more about you, uh, figure out how to write these emails with your help, where should they go? Sure. So we are just kicking off the new season of my podcast, Inbox Besties. So if you're into podcasts, definitely come over for that. Um, again, anywhere you listen to this podcast, after you leave Jillian a review for how great she is, then go ahead and just hit the search button. You can also search for Kate Doster. Um, I've been hanging out a lot on Instagram just to have a lot of fun there. Uh, I mentioned powerlifting because that's what one does when they turn 37. So I share a lot about that on my Instagram stories because you can be fun there. And that's Kate underscore Doster. And if you're like, Kate, like I have an email list, but I haven't talked to them in forever. You can head on over to katedoster.com forward slash the number two and then the word years with an S and that'll give you two years worth of strategically planned email ideas where it's literally like week three of August, send this week two of March, <laughs> send that. Right. And so some people will just send it like verbatim and they absolutely love it. Again, it's not written out. It's just a prompt to get your brain going. Other people like to skip around, but when your brain has something to latch onto, then all of a sudden it's a lot less overwhelming and it can work. And uh, we do have my big course, which opens a couple of times a year called Love Your List as well. But if you sign up for my two years worth of email ideas, then you'll hear about that. So, okay. I have to say, I so appreciate you coming back. I'd love you to come back again to share more of these <laughs> tips. And really, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Just sell everyone. And again, even if you send the five emails or the four emails and you don't get the results that you want, this has no ramifications on you as a person or you as a business owner. And nobody got a hundred percent unsubscribe rate ever from having a launch. They just did not. Okay. And all of your email service providers can give you a link where people can opt out of your current launches, but still stay on your list when you're done. I love that. All right. Well, thank you so much. And we will be in touch. All right. Bye. I hope you guys like this episode. I don't even know where to start to share what my favorite parts were. I actually took notes after this episode to think about sales structure and when I was creating templates, email templates for my low tree cart customers to use, I used Kate's framework. I think she approaches selling so strategically, making it a win-win both for your customer and for you. And I think that is probably my biggest takeaway. Before I go, I want to say that a little over a week and a half ago, I hosted a paid workshop for $10 for people who were curious about selling digital products. And I laid out how to find an idea for your digital product, how to add it to my Lodry cart, how to test it, and all of the resources that we provide to help you. If this is interesting to you, I'm selling the replay again for $10 and you can find it at empire.mylotreecart.com because I'm going to lay out how to build your digital product empire, even if you're starting with a $5 ebook. If this is interesting to you, I recommend you start here. Go to empire.mylotreecart.com and sign up. And if you have any questions about it, just reach out. I love hearing from you. And I will see you here again next week. Mm -hmm.